Hello everybody, this is Tekka, and in this video what we're going to be doing is going over the 10 things you need to do when you first install Manjaro Linux. Now I have a video already going over some of these, it's the 5 things video, but that's more of a longer format, I spend a lot of time in terminal, and I'm just making this so it's more easily digestible for the new user, and there are going to be a couple other tips that I do recommend you do. So the first five things in this video are all going to be within PAMAC, the software manager built into Manjaro. This is what it looks like right here. If you are trying to find it, you could go into your search on anything, type in software and go to the add remove software, or you could simply just search for PAMAC and it is the add remove software. So once you're in here, we're going to want to go over to our properties. So go ahead. You have these two dots. I mean, three dots. Click on that, go to Preferences, and here it's going to ask you to type in a password to verify that you have the permissions to do this. And then from here, the first thing you're going to want to do is go over to the Official Repositories tab. Here is where you can refresh your mirrors list. Now the mirrors are the servers that you're going to pull all your software and updates from, and you want to make sure that you are using the quickest one. Clicking this button will scan all of them available, and then give you well, it will automatically set the quickest as your default. Now, you could choose from worldwide or whatever country you're in. I do suggest you keep worldwide because then there might be a uh, quicker one just right across the border from you than what is natively available in your country. So keep it at worldwide and then click Refresh Mirrors List. This will take anywhere from 3 to 10 minutes depending on your internet speed. And when it's all done, then you can go ahead and continue on to the next step, which is actually updating your system. So to do this, we're going to want to close out our preferences here. And up on the top, you have three options, Browse, Installed, and Updates. If you go ahead and click on Updates, it will check your system for updates and show you what you have available. You see I have three updates here. None of these are actual system updates. It's for other software I have installed on my computer. But I do recommend you make sure that all the upgrades are checked. Go ahead and click Apply. And when this comes up, you just hit Apply. And then it's going to go ahead and build the packages, download them, and update them. And then once it is done, you'll see a check and your system is up to date. Now speaking of updates, we could go ahead and go back into our preferences real quick here. Type in our password as requested. And then under general, you'll see an option that says check for updates and you can select to do that. But right here, automatically download updates. That's one thing I do. That's completely up to you and it kind of depends on if you have bandwidth limitations as well because there could be a lot of them depending on how much software you have installed. So once I check that, the next step is going to be to enable the Arch user repositories. If you go to this tab right here, AUR, Click on that, you can see I already have it enabled on my system, but you're going to want to check this over. I go with keep built packages in the cache and check for updates. By default, Manjaro has a good amount of official repositories and software available to download, but there are going to be a ton of things you want to get that aren't available on the official Manjaro repositories, and that's when the R comes in handy because there are tens of thousands of different packages supported by the community in there that you could go ahead and download through this. And with it enabled within PatMac, PatMac, it seamlessly just works with everything. So we're gonna go ahead and close this out and actually an example of something that we're gonna want to get from the AUR is something called TTF-MS. Give that a quick search and then you can see right here the ttf-ms-fonts and what this is is the microsoft font package this is really handy for if you're working in office software and you need to do something for example in times new roman that's not available by default in linux and that could make it a challenge to move uh, office documents back and forth between linux and windows systems so it's good to have this and have all the microsoft fonts available so once you get that done, what we're going to do is go under Installed, go to the Orphans right here, and you can see there's actually quite a bit of applications. Now what Orphans are, is they are applications or packages that aren't being used by anything else or yourself. So everything in here you don't really need, 
So you go through and actually scan and make sure of this, but in general, you could just go ahead and check all the packages, remove them. Once you have everything checked, you could go ahead, hit apply, and then you could see a list of everything that's gonna get removed, and then you could hit apply again, and it will go ahead and do that. Now, if you have a lot of them, it will be easier to do a command here. I have it down below. You just type that command into terminal as a sudo and you will be good to go. So now number six, what we're gonna talk about is auto mounting. Now I do have a full tutorial on how to do this the right way, which is through the fstab file, but I'm gonna show you the quick way through the graphical user interface that is good for now. So to do this, we're just gonna to want to go to our start menu or however you search for software and then go to disks and then once you have this open, this is how you can select what drives you want to auto mount. Now there's a wide variety of reasons you may want to do this. An example that I have is my virtual machine. If I go over here, you can see virtual machines right here. It's currently mounted, but by default, it's not mounted in the Manjaro system, which then if it's not mounted and for example, I opened up VirtualBox, it will say there's no virtual machines accessible. And then if I went ahead and mounted it, you will be able to see that it is. And this is good to do with situations like that. If you have a backup drive, which I do here, you're gonna to want to automatically mount that just so everything is already connected and you won't run into any issues. So you can see my drives here. This is my main partition. This is my media, my backup, and my virtual machine. I already have auto mounting set up on both of these. So I'm gonna show you how to auto mount my media drive. It's as simple as going, clicking on this gear icon here, and then editing the mount options. When this comes up, you have the user session defaults automatically checked. Now, I do recommend you, if you're gonna do this on a permanent basis, and this isn't just a play around and test it out, I do recommend you check out that tutorial and edit the F stab. You can see here it says switch off this, and it will manage it through here instead of the F stab. So for now, we're gonna go ahead and deselect this and then right here mount on system startup is automatically selected you just make sure it is you can edit some of this information here change the mount point but for now everything is good to go if you do want to get into some of this nitty-gritty do it through the F stab so once you do that you click OK and now if I were to reboot my system the media drive will be automatically mounted on boot. So now for step seven we are going to go ahead and enable our firewall. So here we have our firewall application. This is one of the most simple ones. If you do open up your firewall for example I have two of them. Firewall boom boom. Depending on which one you have it may or may not look like this. I'll have a command down below if you want to install this one. Uh, just for demonstration sake, I'll show you what my other firewall configuration looks like. It looks like this. So for new people, this one is going to be a lot easier to manage. This is the GUFW firewall, and it's as simple as going under firewall, going to status, giving this a slide on over, and now your firewall is enabled. It's as simple as that. I do recommend you go under here to getting started and kind of reading through all these basic instructions and how it works how to set up certain rules and check out your logs so you can see I have it enabled here. And that is the simple way to enable your firewall. And then from here, what we're gonna to want to do for step number eight is enable backups. So to do this, we do this with a program called Time Shift. Let's type in our password here. I do have a separate tutorial on how to do this as well. That's way more in depth. But the things I'll note is when you first open it up, it will take you through a setup wizard. So if I click on this, this is what the setup wizard looks like. Go with this first selection, go next. I do recommend you put your snapshots on a external drive because if something happens to your main hard drive and that's also where you're storing your snapshots, then they're gone, you don't have them. So I put them in my backup drive. That's one of the reasons I automatically mount it. Another option for you could be if you're going to do some major configurations or every once in a while maybe plug in a USB, set that as your snapshot location, and then go ahead and run a snapshot. Uh, if you do plug in a USB, all you need to do is make sure that you set that as your snapshot location and click on create. And then if something does happen, that tutorial does go over how to boot into a live disk and actually back up your system with time shift. Now step number nine is to actually go through your system. It's nothing specific, 
but you need to go through your system settings and your Manjaro settings and truly configure it and make it yours. So this is the system settings for the uh, Plasma desktop environment. Now, I like I should have mentioned this earlier, I'm on KDE Plasma. Uh, most of this will look almost identical in any other desktop environments. This might look a little bit different, but the idea still applies. You need to go through, go through your hardware configuration, make sure that you have the right drivers. So you see I have a NVIDIA card, so I have the non-open source drivers installed. That's very important. As well as my network driver, it does work a little bit better with the non-open source installed. So go through, make sure your drivers are good. You can update your kernel here if you'd like to. Uh, if you're new, I'd suggest you just leave this alone, let it stay on the default and upload, not upload, update as Manjaro sees fit. So I'm running the 5.8, which seems to be a pretty good one. I would never recommend anybody use a experimental kernel build. It will probably break things. And if you're having issues with certain hardware or uh, programs not running right, it doesn't hurt to backpedal and maybe install a LTS uh, kernel or even just go back, for example, to the 5.7 kernel. And then just go through all the settings, go through your appearance settings, change everything how you want. So with this plasma, you have all these different themes. It's beautiful. This is all kind of plasma specific stuff. Um, and if I were to go in here and search up Manjaro, you have your Manjaro settings manager, which has some of that same stuff here. So this is a more condensed version of those hardware configurations, your keyboard settings. I do recommend you go into time and date and make sure that this is synced properly. So you go in here, you set set time and date automatically, or you could change it by the hardware clock and local time zone. But I recommend you set it automatically, hit apply, type in your password, and you're good to go. So run through all the settings available, truly make it your own, set up your local user accounts, do everything to configure your system. And that takes us to step 10, and that is to finally load it up with all the software that you need to have a good computing experience. I will have these two articles linked down below. This one is the top 10 Linux applications. It has a video for it as well, but you could go through here and get some of the things that I would recommend, for example, like Ulauncher, Stacer, which is basically a C cleaner application for Linux, Time Shift, which is fortunately pre built into Manjaro. You have Caden Live, Clean Note, VLC, which is another thing built into Manjaro. That's one thing that's really good about Manjaro, it's a lot of the applications that you absolutely need to have a good experience will be installed on the get go. You have GNOME Tweaks if you're running the GNOME etcher which is a good usb image writer and if i go over here these are applications for content curators so if you're the creative type this will have the recommended writing video editing auto editing photography software of choice featuring a ton of curators that helped me make this video you could watch that over here let's see if i'm pointing the right way no you can watch that over there there's a playlist down there for all my linux content Right below me, you can subscribe. Um, that's about it. I hope you have a wonderful day, and goodbye.